Welcome students, in the previous lecture I have explained how to do goodness of fit for a Poisson distribution. I have explained the theory portions. In this class I am going to give you a Python demo for that. After the Python demo I am going to explain how to do the goodness of fit for uniform distribution and normal distribution. The agenda for this lecture is Python demo for testing goodness of fit for the Poisson distribution theory of how to do the goodness of fit for uniform and normal distribution. After that I will give you the python demo for testing goodness of fit for uniform and normal distribution. Now we will go to the python prompt there we will see how to do goodness of fit for a poisson distribution. Now we will see the python demo say some data set is given we are going to test whether that data set follow poisson distribution or not. So, I am importing the necessary library like scipy from scipy dot stats chi square from scipy dot stats python. Then for I am importing pandas and numpy. So, checking goodness of fit for a Poisson distribution, we will see what is that data set. This data set is given arrival is given, the frequency is given. The arrival is it 1 minute interval. For example, in 1 minute interval, 0 interval, there is 0 frequency. In 1 minute interval, there is 1 arrival, there is 1 frequency. In 1 minute interval, there are 2 arrival, there are 4 frequency and so on. The whatever the data which is given, that is absurd frequency. So, the absurd frequency is, I am going to call it separately, these are our absurd frequency. The next one is we have to find out the expected frequency for given the x values. To know the expected frequency we have to know the mean of the Poisson distribution. We know that mean of the Poisson distribution is like sigma f into n divided by sigma f. See the total arrival is uh, 600 total time period is 100. So, 600 divided by 100. So, the mu value is your 6. So, we know the mu value, we know the x value. Now, we have to find out the expected frequency. So, I am making expected underscore frequency. So, for i in range of length absorbed frequency, then finding the expected frequency. So, E underscore frequency equal to 100 multiplied by because n is 100 multiplied by Poisson dot m of uh, p m of probability mass function i comma mu. Then I am going to get the expected frequency. So, I am using a for loop so that it will save our time. So, the this was our expected frequency. This expected frequency, there are different decimal is there. Suppose I want to round it off to 2 decimal. For that purpose, you have to use this command equal to square bracket round element comma 2 for element in expected frequency. So, expected frequency rounded off, let us see what is that value. So, this is our expected frequency rounded value. Now, we will add these both the variables by using zip command into the object called df. So, the df says that our absurd frequency and expected frequency. Once we know the absurd frequency and expected frequency, then we can get the chi square value directly. But look at here, here the expected frequency is 0.25 that is less than 5. So, up to 3 when you add this 3 then only your expected frequency will be more than 5. So, we have added this. So, after adding, see the absurd frequency is 415, the expected frequency is 6.20. This we have done it manually. When you are running a large program with a huge data set, you can make the program so that the expected frequency is more than 5. But here we have not done that way we are manually added and checked whether the expected frequency is more than 5 or not. So, this is absurd frequency then expected frequency. Now, the similarly you see that uh, for 
10 and 11 and 12 the expected frequency is not more than 5. So, we have collapsed these 3 intervals and made it to 1 interval or that is called 10 or more. So, that is your 8.39 when the interval is 10 or 11 or 12. Now, we have the observed frequency and expected frequency. Simply you pass this command that is the psi pi dot stats dot chi square observed frequency and expected frequency. I have to run this. Now, I am getting the test statistics chi square statistics 3.27. See the p value is 0 0.91, it is above our 0 0.05. So, we have to accept our null hypothesis. In our presentation also, I have told you the p value is 0 0.91 the calculated chi square value is 3.27. So, we have to accept our null hypothesis and we have to conclude that the given data set follows Poisson distribution. We have tested whether the given data set follow Poisson distribution or not. So, Poisson distribution is the discrete distribution. We will see another example where the given data set follow uniform distribution or not. So, the milk sales is given for 12 months January, February, March, April, May, June up to December. The liters also given like this. So, we are going to say that the sales follow uniform distribution or not. So, the assumption is the sales follow uniform distribution. So, what is a null hypothesis? The monthly milk figures for milk sales are uniformly distributed. Alternative hypothesis is the monthly milk figures of milk sales are not uniformly distributed. You see that the not appears in our alternative hypothesis, which is not our traditional way of forming the null hypothesis. So, we take alpha equal to 0 0.01, the k is the given data set because there are 12 month data set is there 12 and here see the p value is 0 because the uniform distribution is not having any parameter. because if you know the lower limit and upper limit of uniform distribution, you can easily construct the uniform distribution. So, for uniform distribution having the 0 parameter, after simplifying it is 11. So, when alpha equal to 0 0.01, the degrees of freedom is 11, the calculated chi square value is 24.725. So, if you are using p value, if the critical value method, if the calculated value is greater than, not calculated value, I am correcting, this is the uh, table value, table value which you got from the chi square table 24.725. If the calculated chi square value is greater than 24.725, we have to reject it, otherwise, we have to accept our null hypothesis. We can find out the chi square table value by using this one chi square dot ppf 0 0.99 and 1. 24.72 see that the same value 24.72. Now, this is the given data set month is given absorbed frequency is given to know the expected frequency what you have to do we have to sum this data set see that this is the sum values 18447. Then because it is follow uniform distribution you divide by 12. So, equal value is 1537.25. So, everywhere you can write this would be our expected frequency. Then you find out absorbed frequency minus expected frequency whole square divided by expected frequency, then you sum it, you are getting 74.38. So, the calculated chi square value is 74.38. Let us see the python code for this. The x is given, we are finding the mean 1537. So, expected frequency is nothing but the same value, expected frequency this also we are entered manually. Then from psi pi dot stats import chi square. So, chi square x comma expected frequency. So, when you give chi, comma, uh, chi square uh, x comma expected underscore frequency, you will get the calculated chi square value is 74.37, the p value is 1.7 into 10 to the power minus 11. So, you see that this the our python outputs and our calculated values are same. So, 
So, obviously, this was the table value 24.725, our calculated value is this one. So, we have to reject our null hypothesis. When we reject null hypothesis, what we are concluding that the data set is not following uniform distribution. Now, we will go to another very interesting example testing some data set and checking whether it is following normal distribution or not. So, what are the different steps are there? The first step is set up null and alternate hypothesis, select a random sample and compute the mean and standard deviation, define intervals of values so that the expected frequency is at least 5 for each interval. For each interval record the observed frequency, then compute the expected frequency for each interval, then compute the value of test statistics, then reject H naught if the chi square value is greater than your value which you got from the table. Here the alpha is significance level. Here the degrees of freedom is k minus 3 because we know that this is k minus 1 minus p. So, here p is a 2 because there are 2 parameter for a normal distribution. So, the value of p equal to 2 that is why we got k minus 3. We will take an example. See some computer manufacturers and sells a general purpose microcomputer. As part of a study to evaluate the sales personnel, management wants to determine that alpha equal to 5 percentage significance level. If the annual sales volume that is the number of units sold by the salesperson follows normal probability distribution. So, there are some data set The data set is nothing but the number of units sold by the sales people. They want to test whether that sales follow normal distribution or not. A simple random sample of 30 of the sales people was taken and their number of units sold are given below 33, 43, 44 and so on. So, for this data set the mean is 71, standard deviation is 18.23. So, we have imported the data. So, we are finding the mean is 71, standard deviation is 18.22. For this data set what is the null hypothesis? The population of number of units sold has a normal distribution with the mean 71 and standard deviation 18.23. The alternate hypothesis is the population of number of units sold does not have a normal distribution with the mean 71 and standard deviation 18.23. Because many time whenever you collect the data we have to test what distribution it follows. Because when you do the simulation or other purpose we have to knowing the exact distribution of the given data set is more important. That is why testing the particular distribution will be very helpful for further analysis of our data set. First we will make an interval to satisfy the requirement of an expected frequency of at least 5, this is very important at least 5 in each interval. We will divide the normal distribution by 5, so 30 divided by 5, so that we will get 6 equal probability intervals. You see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, when you divide by 5, we will get 6 interval. Because then when you divide this way, when we can make sure that in every interval, you will get minimum 5 or more observed values. So, total area equal to 1. So, when you divide by 1 divided by 6, you will get 0 0.1667. It is because this area is 0 0.1667 this area is 0 0.1667 everywhere. So, when the area is 0 0.167 you can get the z value. We know that the lower limit is x bar minus z sigma. So, x bar is given z value you can get it sigma value also given you can find out this interval. So, this is 53.367 the second point is we know see x bar is 71. How we got the 71? because the mean is 71, right? the mean is 71, the sigma is given, sigma is 18.23, when it is 0 0.66 plus 0 0.66, the corresponding z value is 
0 0.43. So, 0 0.43 and this sigma value that is your 16.17. Similarly, on the right hand side, see that how we got 88.63, the mean value is given. So, when the this side area is 0 0.16, this area is 0 0.166, this area is 0 0.166. When you add that, then corresponding z value is 0 0.97. So, 71 plus 0 0.97, this was our sample standard deviation, so sigma value, then you can get 88.63, 88.63. What we got it? You got different intervals. So, what are that intervals? You see that the 1 divided by 6, so that we will get a different 6 equal probability intervals. So, for j in range 1 comma 6, the probability underscore interval is sci pi dot start dot norm dot ppf. You can substitute j value directly here then x comma mean and standard deviation. So, when you print this probability interval, you are getting this your different intervals which we got after solving manually. You see it 53.67, 53.67, the second value is 63.149, 63.149. This was our interval from the normal distribution. See that the first value is 0 to 53.36, see that was this value. The second one is 53.02, 63.03, 63.14, then 71, 78, 88, the maximum value is 88.63. So, what we have to do? Now, we have to go to this values. In that interval, we have to count it how many numbers are appearing. For example, in the interval, you see that when the interval less than 53.02, this was 6 is observed frequency. So, how we got the 6 one? From this given data set, you have to find out how many numbers are below that. When you count to it, it will be 6. Similarly, in the interval 53.02, 63.03, in our given data set, we have to count it how many numbers are appearing in this range. There will be a 3 this is our observed frequency. This is 5 is expected frequency because there was a 30 data set. Since we, we divided 30 divided by 6, there will be a 5 expected frequency will be there. Because why we are dividing by 5? Because minimum we need to have 5 expected frequency. That is why we have divided by 6. So, we have to divide the given data set by a number so that the expected frequency is 5. So, we got this absurd frequency, then expected frequency, then find the difference, square the difference. This was our expected frequency, this is our absurd frequency. So, psi pi dot stat chi square absurd frequency comma expected frequency, we are getting 1.5. You see the p value is 0 0.90, that is we see that 5 percentage, it is more than that we say we have to accept our null hypothesis. So, the given data set follow normal distribution. When you look at this one, alpha equal to 0 0.05. So, for there are k equal to 6, how we got k 6 number of intervals and going back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that is why it is a k equal to 6. P is a 2 parameter n. So, 6 minus 2 minus 1 is the 3 degrees of freedom when uh, 3 degrees of freedom, when alpha equal to 5 percentage, the table value is 7.815. You look at this one, our test statistics, absorbed frequency minus expected frequency whole square divided by expected frequency, when we add it, it is 1.6. So, what is happening in a chi-square distribution? So, this value is 7.815, our calculated value, we are getting 1.6. So, we have to accept our null hypothesis and we have to conclude that the given data set follow normal distribution. Now, I will explain the python code of testing how to check whether the given data set follow uniform distribution and normal distribution. Suppose we want to know the chi square table value when alpha equal to 1 percentage, when it is alpha 1 percentage, we have to write chi square dot ppf 0.99 comma 11 degrees of freedom. 
So, we are getting the calculator the table value of chi square value is 24.72. The next one this is our x value then we are finding the mean of that one. So, the expected frequency is nothing but it is going to be our mean. Now, we got the observed frequency that is your 1610 that is x value then expected frequency is this one exp underscore f. So, when you write chi square x comma expected underscore f this is our expected frequency. So, now we are getting look at the p value the p value is 1.7 10 to the power minus 11 it is very low value. So, we have to reject our null hypothesis you will look at this our calculated chi square value is 74 the table chi square value is 24. So, 74 is larger than 24. So, we have to reject our null hypothesis and then we are concluding that the given data set is not following uniform distribution. Now, we have seen the after that you have seen the second example there are some data set is given we are going to test whether this data set follow normal distribution or not. So, what I am I am running this data set first I am finding the mean the mean of the given data set is 71 and the standard deviation of the given data set is 18.23. So, what is a null hypothesis the given data set whose mean is 71 and standard deviation 18.22 follow normal distribution alternative hypothesis is it is not following normal distribution. Then the given data set the x value we have to divide by 6 because we need to have minimum 5 expected frequency not observed frequency expected frequency in each interval. So, the given data set is divided into 6 so that because 30 divided by 6 I will get 5 expected frequency in each interval. Now, in the range of 1 comma 6 I am going to get the different intervals. So, one interval is 0 to 53.36, another interval is 53.36 to 63.14, another interval is 63.14 to 71, next one is 71 to 78.85, the last interval is 88.63 and above. So, this was our interval. So, how we got this interval? Now, we got the different intervals. Our expected frequency is 555. I am running this because we have divided by 6 and our observed frequency. So, in from the given data set in the range of 0 to 53.67 we have to count it how many data set is there there are 6 data set. In the interval 53.36 to 63.14 there are 3 data set in the interval 63.14 to 71 there are 6 data set. So, and so on we have to manually count it how many data set is appearing in this interval that is our observed frequency. So, now we got the expected frequency and observed frequency then when we do the chi square test. So, we are getting p value 0 0.90 that is bigger than our alpha value. So, we have to accept null hypothesis and we are concluding that the given data set follow normal distribution. In this lecture First I have explained a demo for testing goodness of fit for a Poisson distribution. Then I have explained the theory behind how to test goodness of fit for a uniform distribution normal distribution that is some data set is given how to test the given data set follow uniform distribution or normal distribution. Then I have done the python code with the help of python demo I have explained how to test the uniform and normal distribution for goodness of it. Because the testing another important point you have to remember all the random numbers follow uniform distribution. Sometime you may ask to say some random numbers and you have to test whether the numbers are really random or not. For that purpose we have to test whether the given data set it is following uniform distribution or not. If certain numbers following uniform distribution we can conclude that that numbers are random numbers.